Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. A few days ago, I put out a video entitled Study Guide to the New 2019 Canadian Drone Pilot Basic Operations Exam. And the response from you guys has been overwhelming. Over 1,300 views, maybe 1,400 by the time you watch this, 100 thumbs up, uh, lots and lots of comments, about 50 comments. And I wanted to take a few minutes to thank you for watching and particularly thank you for those who took the time to comment and ask questions and point out some errors. Let's check those out in a few seconds. First of all, two viewers, Gary Foster and Darren Gallant, noticed and mentioned that I had made a mistake in the video. Um, around the 11 minute point where I'm talking about the maximum height you can fly over top of buildings and structures, I erroneously say that you can only fly up to 30 meters above the ground. In actual fact, in the way that the rules are written, it's 30 meters above the structure or the building. If you are within 21 meters measured horizontally or, uh, from, from the building. So um, that what that means is if you are flying along and you are getting close to a building, you cannot fly any more than 30 meters above it. So in some cases, that means your maximum altitude drops. That would be the, probably most of the time uh, for a low building, like maybe uh, you know, 10, 10 meters high. Uh, you can then go only 50 meters above ground level, 20 meters for the building, 30 meters above that. Um, it, in a peculiar case of a very tall building, if you're in uncontrolled um, airspace, you could actually fly higher than the normal 122 meters as a result of that, because you could fly 30 meters above the whole height of that building, which might be exceptionally tall. Now, anyone who did purchase the PDF copy of the slide presentation, I have sent you guys uh, a revised version, version two of the PDF. And by the way, if you haven't already done so and you still want to, the PDF is still available. Just check the description below for a link to my shop where you can where you can purchase that for a nominal fee. Another interesting comment was about my little mini rant about uh, understanding aviation frequencies and converting UTC um, uh, time zones to your local time. I thought those were ridiculous, but Brian C pointed out, and thank you Brian for doing this, that in actual fact those aren't that crazy, even for the basic operations folks like myself. Um, so on the UTC conversion, uh, time zone conversion issue, we are expected when before we launch as one of our pre-flight checks to check what's called the NOTAMs, the notice to airmen, which are available on the NAV Canada site. And all of these NOTAMs have references, time references, and they're all in UTC time, Greenwich Mean Time or Zulu time. And so you do have to, in fact, convert to your local time zone to understand if they apply to you. And on the radio frequencies, it's, it's uh, recommended, not mandatory, but recommended that you listen on the aviation bands for any traffic in your area. And uh, so that, again, is a good tip from Brian, and I appreciate that very much. Another viewer named Ice Screamer uh, had a great question about moving around within the exam while you're actually doing the exam. Can you skip questions and then go back? Yes, you can. So I'd have to say Transport Canada did an, a really, really good job on the user interface within the exam. I might not like the questions, but I do like how you can move around. So at any point you can, you see all the questions along the bottom of your screen and you can see the ones you've answered and not answered. And you can get to the end and go back and change the, your answers to the wrong ones, which is probably what I did, um, and, and that sort of thing. And it, I think it also shows you the time remaining on the screen. So that's a very handy thing as well. Well, that's all for now. Uh, I do want to mention that I'm working on another video walking through in a detailed fashion all of the flight regulations, the so-called 901 rules, and um, putting on one side of the screen the verbatim rule, and on the other side of the screen Don's interpretation and how that will help you to fly safer and maybe some practical tips about uh, what you should do about that rule. So watch for that coming up. And um, all of this with the intent of clearing up ambiguity, making it easier for you to understand these rules and to fly safer. So thank you again for watching. Please like and subscribe and comment below. I love your comments. 
happy flying. <laughs>